In this video, I'm going to explain how I beat one of the best auto-scrolling Kaiser levels from the Mario ROM hack, Storks and Apes and Crocodiles. Because this ROM hack has no overworld, I'm simply going to call this the Airship level, which is the last of the main stages of Morsel's well-known 2017 ROM hack, Storks and Apes and Crocodiles. Both halves of the level feature a custom-coded auto-scroller, which generally is a type of level that is commonly disliked in platforming games. Because of this, every obstacle in the level is timed to be exactly the same during each attempt, leaving it up to the player to become consistent to win. This video is part of a series I've been editing myself where I discuss some of the more intricate details of what goes into beating difficult Mario levels, so please take a second to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because it helps me to be able to continue making these more than you might realise. The beginning of the level has Mario fired towards a chain as a bullet charges towards me. These bullets are a custom sprite which fly straight until they're near Mario, at which point they'll fall directly downwards in an attempt to kill me. When they hit a ground tile, they'll burst into flames, but if they hit one of these nets, they'll explode similar to a bomb. To grab this chain, I need to gently pull back before landing on it so that I can mislead the bullet away from where I'm trying to climb. Flame jets are found throughout this level and serve as a timing cue that forces the player to keep up with the auto-scrolling camera at a very specific time, and then there's just enough time to land on these jets as the fire begins to spawn before it will actually kill me. These Disco Waffles are a custom sprite ported from Mario 3 which behave a lot like Boo Rings and these keep me from being able to stand still. I believe the arrow indicator here is trying to tell me that I need to do a full spin jump at any point when the bullet is falling through the blue coins. Blue, purple, let me know what you think they are. Anyway, getting a spin jump at the right time will let me spin jump on the explosion that the bullet creates and this isn't always a reliable trick. I find that jumping early whilst on these flying coin blocks is the best way to set up each jump to avoid the fire here, and this gives me time to get to the yellow turn block before things get too messy. I really like how this obstacle forces Mario to move just a small amount on a single tile. Then I need a well-timed jump to get through the opening in these fireballs where I then jump to the left to build up some run speed so that I can make it to the next coin block just in time while it's at its highest point so that I can jump high enough to make it to the clouds. Basically all I'm saying is I need more run speed so I can jump higher. A couple of surprise bullets will try to troll me, but if I survive, I'll get an automatic checkpoint. The custom auto scroll at the beginning of the second half acts as a survival section before it lets me go anywhere. Because this is the first obstacle of the section, the timing of the bullets firing very quickly becomes familiar. All of the platforming here is timed carefully with the custom auto scroll, and most of it is a single tile wide. This part is really clever in how it forces me to reuse the same part of the room a second time whilst carrying this throw block. I need to keep this block alive for just long enough to clear the way up ahead, and three bullets will try to remove it from Mario's hand. The most consistent and easy way to deal with any obstacle like this is to have Mario just kick the block upwards before the bullets collide with the block. The rest of this level is a series of different patterns using the Disco Waffles. The first ones are quite easy because I can just spot the openings and try to move with them to give myself more time. The next jump will sort of just line itself up if I commit to jumping wide as I go through the opening of the first ring. Then we have this one which is by far the most difficult to time. Finding a visual cue here is the most important method to actually getting through it rather than relying on sheer luck. My visual cue relied on using this particular disco ball and jumping as soon as I saw it move through the platform, and with a full running jump I have enough time to slide through the gap just behind it. Jumping out is easy and then I just have to survive past these last couple of easier rings until the coin block gets near enough that I can make it to the pipe and score another checkpoint. This Lemmy fight is probably the most awful part of the entire game for me. In this boss fight, there are two homing bullets that cannot be touched without killing Mario. One of them speeds across the screen and pauses for a moment before realizing where Mario is and then dives back towards him. The other is constantly homing and turns sharply. Both are incredibly annoying. Thankfully, the pattern that Lemmy spawns in is exactly the same in every speedrun, but if I die, then it's all trial and error and I won't know where he'll end up. So casually, this fight is a nightmare. 
I can't really explain my strats for this fight because I'll always just play to the room, but generally I try to always jump high and wide so that the bullets travel further away from Mario. The main one I look at is the bullet that zooms across and pauses because it can sometimes come out of nowhere right when I'm trying to jump and will kill the attempt. After three hits, Lemmy goes down, but there are challenging three hits at that. Thanks for watching and here's what the level looks like from start to finish.